y'all, Juliana from Alabama here, and today we're gonna show you how to make your very own jump cup. To make your own jump cups, you only need three pieces of materials. You need a one by one inch piece of lumber. You can get this at any Lowe's, Home Depot, any home improvement store that sells wood. You need a six inch long quarter inch size bolt. It doesn't matter what kind of head that it has. It can have a Phillips head, it can have a hex head. It really doesn't matter. This is just going to become your pin. And then you need some paracord. So this is like a nylon a uh, cord that lasts a really long time and is really durable. It's called para cord. The only tools you really need is a hacksaw. You can use a circular saw or a table saw if you have one. Uh, you really don't need that type of power to cut through this little piece of wood. You can use some good elbow grease to cut through this. Lord knows my flabby arms need a little workout anyway. And then you do need a drill with a half inch wood drill bit on the end of it. After some good old-fashioned manual labor and some elbow grease, you will have a product that looks like this. All right, let me show you how it's done. Step numero uno is that you need to measure out your piece of wood in two inch increments. And then cut your board into two inch cubes. I started with my little hacksaw just to show you that it can in fact be done, but I quickly realized that was way too much work, so I backed it up and got my circular saw out and it went a lot quicker. If you are going to use such a power tool as this, be sure you know how and that you do not chop a finger off or you have adult supervision. You will then have these really cute little two inch cubes and the next step is to drill a hole in the center. I actually use this half inch paddle bit and a pair of channel locks so that I did not drill a hole into the center of my hand. So just aim for the center of the cube and drill down. I use the ground as support because this is pressure stone and it can go straight through. And just sand down all the rough edges and this step is not necessary but I painted all of my little cubes white with exterior paint that had primer in it. You don't have to do this as this is treated lumber, but it just makes it last a little longer and looks a little nicer. Although you will be cleaning paint off of your hands for the next few days because it's impossible to paint a little cube without getting it all over your fingers. It's been a couple days later and my cubes are finally completely dry and ready to turn into cute little jump cups like these. So first I'll show you exactly how these jump cups work and then I'll show you how to put them together. But like I said, you use your bolt as your pin, so you just stick that in. There's a uh, dirt dauber nest in one of my holes here. So we'll show you here. You just stick it in like that. And then you take one loop, put it over one side, let it kind of dangle, and then hook the other loop over the other pin like so. And this is your jump cup. And I'll show you it's good enough to do either a cross rail or a vertical. It holds the poles very well. Now my poles are actually, their old landscape timbers. So see, they do have a flat edge and that tends to do really well with this kind of jump cup. So it does great as a cross rail. It stays in there pretty well and it does very good as a vertical it stays in there pretty well i mean if you knock it hard enough it will come off but it's not like any little bitty grays will make it roll right off however i have not tried it with pvc poles or really rounded poles so i'm not sure how well that it works with those it might be more prone to fall off and if that is the case if you do have rounded pvc poles the reason you do two cubes instead of one cube across is the two cubes kind of gives you this like cup type shape. If you just had one straight across, it would come off very easily. So if you do have rounded poles, maybe give yourself a little more slack in the ties and that'll give you a more of a cup like shape where they won't roll off quite so easily. Now I'll show you how to actually measure out where to make your ties. 
So as you can see, it is what two loops on either side and then a knot to keep the cubes in the center. So what I did when I first started doing this is I took my paracord, I just hooked it over, let it hang, see where it connected with my cubes and then made my first knot there, looped the cubes through, made my second knot, and then looped it back around and tied it. That was the best way I could come up with to figure out the spacing exactly. So I'll show you how to do one really quick. So I got my two cubes here and my paracord. So I'm just gonna give me extra slack in the paracord. And what you wanna do, that's probably way too much. You don't wanna waste this stuff, it is a little expensive. So double over your paracord like so, and then stick the rounded tip in through your holes. And it takes a little finagling to get it all the way through. Pull it and then do your other cube. Erg, this one's not cooperating so much. It might be helpful to have a little a metallic stick to help you thread it through. I was not so prepared, but your bolt might actually kind of help you thread it through. Kind of push it up in there like so. There we go. And through the back. All right. So I put my bolt back. So I'm going to hook my pin right there. That's kind of where I want it to hang. And then the other will go over here. So I kind of want to make, you want to give yourself extra slack because it's super frustrating for this loop to be very taut and you can't, ah, cubes overboard and you can't get it to stretch around to your bolt so make sure you give yourself plenty of slack there plus like i said you want a little bit of dangle so that it makes the cup shape all right so now that i know where i want my knot i'm gonna kind of bring these back a little bit all you do i just lost both of them great but all you do is kind of hold where you want your knot to be and it's just a simple knot it's nothing fancy so this is kind of where you want your knot to be just make a loop here and then stick the excess through like that and that's all you need for your first knot let's make sure it still has plenty of slack and it does so let me see if i can get my cubes back on i'm not very good at this tutorial stuff Need to be a little more prepared but anyway guys i've got a lot of these kind of hacks um i have owned horses since i was 15 and that was gosh i gotta do simple math damn near 20 years ago uh so i've been a cheap skate this entire time and i've come up with a lot of little hacks kind of similar to this type of thing oh my gosh i'm struggling um a threading tool would be very helpful but anywho once I get my life together which I almost have it fully together uh, I'm finally into a routine I got my house all unpacked uh, we're still working on the barn getting it uh, better we're still building walls for the stalls that kind of thing so uh, we'll show you an updated barn tour sometime soon but like I said once I get my life a little bit more organized, I hope to make more videos. So see now my loop is better there. Um, I hope to make more consistent videos and once a month I want to make a hack of the month. So I have all sorts of hacks and I'm not sure if I'll be able to keep doing it once a month at the moment, but fairly soon I'll be doing once a month. Okay, so enough jibber jabber. So now we need to make a second loop I actually need to cut it first or else I'll get all kinds of tangled in my extra rope. So now that we kind of know where we want it to hang, I can cut the paracord about where I think I'll make my other knot. So I'm going to give myself plenty of slack like I said. This would be better to do with a pair of scissors. Uh, get you guys some scissors. 
crime and alley, I cut the wrong end. I'm dumb. <laughs> I meant to cut this end, which is all the excess paracord. Oh, Lord, get it together. All right, well, let me give myself extra slack. I promise it's easier than what I'm making it out to be. Ah, I lost a cube! Anywho, if you had a pair of scissors, this would be way more easier to do. Well, while you watch me struggle for the umpteenth time to thread this paracord through this cube, um, I will talk about what other videos I have planned for you guys. So, I finally am in a routine and Buck has had a, an exorbitant amount of time off and he's a big fat butterball turkey sitting out in the field for the past four months. So I'm slowly getting him back into work. We've been doing a lot of walking. Um, I think a lot of walking up and down hills, backing up up hills, that kind of thing is really good to do to bring the horse slowly back into work before you start doing uh, more serious work and just kind of build up their cardio a little bit and get them kind of back in the mindset of working. So we've been doing a lot of hacks. I finally live on a nice quiet road where I can do hacks. Okay, so now I got book cubes on. I'm gonna make my second knot here, but I'm just looping through and pulling the cord back through the hole. So just a simple knot upon itself, kind of tighten it into the cube. You don't want the cube super tight. I'll show you. Like I said, you don't want the cubes like super duper tight on each other or they'll just be one straight line. So you don't want this not to be right on the cube. You want to have, I don't know, an inch, half an inch, depending on how much slack you want and how much cup you want to let the cubes cup as opposed to being a straight line. I'll come back around and loop it around here and I wish I had a little bit more paracord I cut the wrong side uh, to make my final knot here. I might not even have enough paracord, let's see. And you, like I said, you don't want to make this super tight against the bolt because if you do, then it'll be kind of hard to loop it around the bolt. You want to have a little bit of slack. I think I have just barely enough. So on your next one, Learn from my mistakes. Give yourself plenty of, uh, I might have to do another one. Give yourself plenty of slack so you have plenty of cord to work with. Okay, I've made as tight, it's just a box knot, so a knot upon itself. To do a nice strong box knot, you wanna do either over, over, or under, under. You don't wanna do one side over and then the other side under, if that makes sense. There's probably better knots you can do for this, but that will hold a lot of weight and wear and tear. Uh, another thing you can do with this paracord is get a lighter and very carefully burn the ends off. It will kind of sear these ends. You see how these ends are all frayed now? it will sear these ends and they'll kind of melt into each other and you can also do that on the knot itself kind of melt the knot together so that it won't come apart as easily as you can see on these older ones i made it uh, that's what i did i seared it together these are well over five years old and they're still in great shape so simple box knot and then these knots are just knots upon themselves and that's how you make your own jump cup jump cup so these little cups, they probably cost, let's see, I'm going to put the cost down below, but like I said, all you need is a bolt, a one by one board, and paracord. That's all the materials you need. And so I had enough material to make 10 cups. I actually, I probably had more, but I only bought 10 bolts. Uh, but the one by one piece, you can buy like probably a six foot piece of that. And I'll put the price down below. It wasn't much at all. These bolts are less than $2 a piece. And the paracord itself was like 7 bucks. And that leaves you way more paracord than you need. And you have extra paracord to do other things. So, like you can make 10 to 20 jump cups for like less than 20 bucks. 
or as opposed to one set of jump cups, the cheapest I can find is seven bucks for one set of jump cups. Uh, and they get up to like 10, 15, 20 dollars per set of jump cups, the fancier kind of cups that you get. So in my opinion, that's pretty expensive for a simple little piece of metal. And this is a great little hack if you don't have a great big budget to be able to make your own jump cups. And you don't have to paint them either. That's just an extra step. So if you don't have paint sitting around, paint can be a little expensive, but you don't even need a big gallon of paint. You can just get a little tiny thing of paint for like five bucks and make sure it's exterior paint that has primer in it and your jump cups will last forever. Well, not forever. But like, like I said, mine have lasted five plus years and they still look great and they still function really well. I'm gonna make a few more of these and maybe I can do them with a little more grace. Once you kind of start making a couple, you figure out how much paracord you actually do need and it's not such a big, look, all the animals are coming to check out what I'm doing over here. It's not such a big um, fiasco to get one done. You can get them done fairly quickly and pump them out pretty quick and they look a lot better than that first one I made. You just have to kind of get used to what you need to do. All the animals are about to come and knock over all my stuff and the camera and everything. So I'm going to love you and leave you here. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Like I said, I'm gonna have a lot of DIY hacks similar to this kind of thing that will save you guys a bunch of money, time, and frustration. And I'm also getting Buck back into training, so I'm gonna come out with some more training videos and I'll do a barn tour soon. And I'm looking for a new trainer myself because I am over two and a half hours away from my old trainer, very sadly. I loved my old trainer, but I need to find one that's closer by because I just can't hack driving two and a half hours of one way to take a lesson with this sack of potatoes. Yes, I called you a sack of potatoes. Look how fat you are. He's a big chunker monker who has to get back into shape. Mwah. What you eating? Did you eat something funky? So yeah, you can see Buck is a little on the chunky monkey side. Actually, he looks a little better than he did because we've been walking. The past two weeks, we've walked almost every single day about three miles. No, that's not food. Okay, love you and leave you. Thank you. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, all the things that help me out so I can keep making these videos for you guys. And I promise I'll get more consistent very soon. Love you, mean it. Bye. Mwah. Goodbye, donk-a-donk. -donk.